morning, fly tires. My name is John Schultz. I'm sort of a stillwater junkie when it comes to fly tying, so nearly all of my patterns are for stillwater. This fly that I'm going to start with today, I call the Manitoba Minnow. I'm going to build this fly to begin with with a moonlit MLO 54 number 8 1x strong 2x long hook. And I'm going to, for, for thread on this fly, I'm going to use my friend Boyd Guyman's magic thread. <laughs> it actually is spooled up, very fine monofilament thread. Tying this fly on a Norvice. I've been tying on the Norvice for probably about 14 years. And if I have to tie on something else anymore, I feel like I'm in slow motion when I do it. The body of this fly is going to be made with hairline flat diamond braid. It gives it a really nice minnow texture. It's, it's in pearl. I'm going to lay that material on the hook and get it tied in well. I'm going to do multiple layers with this material trying to taper it in so it appears to be more like a minnow body. I'm not going to go all the way back this time. I'm going to go a little farther further forward, get a, a nice minnow-shaped belly onto the fly. This fly originated in Manitoba. I was out on a lake called Patterson Lake with my wife and a friend of mine. And we were fishing in the fall. We'd fished this lake a number of times before with great success, but we'd been fishing almost till lunchtime and none of us had caught a fish yet. And finally, just before we went in for lunch, my wife caught about a 16-inch rainbow, which is a minnow for Patterson Lake. But she um, brought it up onto her, her uh, stripping apron and it threw up about 30 little tiny minnows similar to this one. Okay, the next thing I'm going to put on now is some Wapsi Pine Squirrel Sculpin Olive Fur. I'm going to take the end of that, I'm going to set my tail length. first. First of all, I'll trim a, a little bit of a tapered end onto the squirrel so it, it doesn't look like a blunt out there. And I'll lay it across the top of the, the body of the squirrel for the, with about the tail length that I want and separate the hair right up behind the butt, body of the fly. I'm going to, with my magic thread, I'm going to wrap that in. Pretty well, then advance my thread up behind the eye. Then I'm going to do one wrap with the squirrel around the head. It kind of gives it the, a gilf looking form. Separate the hair again and tie that in. And trim off the excess. And I'm going to build a small head on the fly. 
And from here, I will whip finish this at the head, but then I'll move back to the back end of the fly and finish tying it in. So I'm going to fold all my fur to the front and get it out of the way. I like to use this monitor clear thread because it disappears in the body of the fly better than others. After I get tied in here, I like to take a little bit of crazy glue. It's just a super glue, but I like it because it comes with a brush applicator. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of across the top of the pearl braid. And I'm going to lay that pine squirrel back down over it. And again, separate the hair right where I want it tied in. But continuing on with my Manitoba minnow story, after I saw the minnows that were thrown up on the on her boat, I uh, went in for lunch, and I had some of that diamond braid with me, and I lit, I made as close to an exact replica of that minnow that I could come up with and I, I made four of them. I gave one to my wife and one to my friend and I kept two. And we went back out after lunch and we all tied them on and we were all hooked up simultaneously right when we got to the water so it saved the day for the the trip back there so that's the manitoba minnow one thing i do do a little different if you're fishing in waters with perch i put an olive sharpie par mark on the body of the fly in a couple of little stripes and it makes an excellent little perch pattern i tie this down as small as a 12 and as large as a 2 so it's real versatile and you can do multiple colors so. okay very realistic minnow looking pattern in the water